Hi guys, just want to talk about my connection with MGTOW and the the bits that I take from MGTOW. Because when I explain stuff, it, it's an explanation of what comes out of it. Now, some people said, well, it's a bit selfish, that it's all about me, 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 and all this sort of stuff. MGTOW has a broad spectrum of people in there at different levels. It's like some you'll hear some people say about... Um, their connection with women is purely sexual, use, use and dump, that sort of stuff. Yet you'll see other people that will say, don't get involved with women whatsoever, and they try and avoid them. You'll get other people that are just trying to find their way in the world. The point being is it, it's, it's not cut and dry as one thing. There's multiple things going on. Now, my view on it is very simple. I think a lot of it is to do with empowerment. A lot of it is to do with making your own choices and taking responsibility for yourself and not allowing people to dictate to you. Also recognizing that you can choose your own path. Now, that's not being selfish. Selfish is when you turn around and force people into things that they don't want to do because it makes everything easier for a government or for um, the courts or whatever. That's selfish. Um, now, when I looked at the Reggie Yates video, the first bit when I seen all the guys in the room together, I would say a lot of those guys are looking for direction. Now, I understand some of the problems they face because if you're talking about, say, you want to ask somebody out um, at work to go out for a coffee or whatever outside of work, firstly, if you get a kickback, you're worried about that they're going to make you the ridicule of the office. The other side of that being it is you can become the gossip anyway with if somebody overhears or something else. And the other side being, what if you're accused of sexual harassment in the workplace? Because... That's the society that's being created. I know with Carillion that, I mean, the, I don't remember reading the policy about this, but I do remember them stressing this, and especially relating to Dubai, where there was what they call the wives club, because they created jobs for their wives in the company. And this is what they're saying. If you're married, you can't work at Carillion. Only one person should be working at Carillion. They can't add the couple. Now, like I said, I don't remember reading the policy on that because it could have some legality issues around it. Um, but the point being is there's a corporation dictating that you shouldn't be in a relationship with somebody else from work. Yet the joke being is, if you took it from a business case, most of the people were permanently at work. Myself, I lived in Premier Inn for nine months and my mate Steve, I spent most of my time with. April was in the Philippines and in Spain. I was busy working on the daytime at various hospitals around the UK and on the evenings, me and Steve would be sat in a hotel. That, that's, that's probably, that's, we've probably spent more time together than a lot of people do in their male-female relations. I just want to point out there's nothing sexual going on between me and Steve. Just what we, we spent a lot of time together. Same with the guys we're out in the Middle East with. We, we basically lived and worked together seven days a week for months. Um, but getting back, because I've gone off on a tangent, back on track. The empowerment on this is like when I looked at the way this the guy is trying to promote um, sleeping with a woman in every city, that sort of stuff. Um, I can understand some people do that stuff and I leave that to them. I, I'm not even going to get into that argument whether it's right or wrong because I'm a strong believer in freedom of choice anyway. But what I do recognize is a lot of the guys would be trying to find their way in the world and find it quite difficult because the work relationships have changed. The social environment's changed. If you go back a few generations, a lot of things revolve around the pub. The pub involved your dad going there, your mum and dad go there for a crib or whatever. Um, or in my case, come from a military background. You normally dated within your own group. You know, at the end of the day, there'll be uh, women that are part and parcel um, of their parents, their father being in the military. So there's male and females as part of your group. 
a lot of people don't have that anymore. Their neighborhoods are not grouped together because a lot of that was formed around things like the pub or the pub um, where people met on a regular basis. Church communities are not the same anymore where everybody goes to the church and things like that. That's, that's sort of disappeared in many ways. And a lot of churches are nightclubs now. How, how ironic is that? Um, but the, the point being is the social environment's changed, but nothing good has replaced it. Internet has appeared, Facebook's appeared, and Facebook has been blamed for many divorces out there, because uh, obviously people meet up with their exes and stuff like that, or um, people that had a crush on somebody when they were at school are now able to message them with their, without actually having to face them directly and then see how it goes, because they can always unfriend. Um, but you're not getting that social connection face to face in a lot of environments. A lot of things are based on one night stands, going to a nightclub, going to a pub for for drinking, not for playing darts, doing social stuff that involved different levels of a family, which also meant that you know your neighbours and you had lots of people from the same work communities together. Um, all that sort of stuff's disappeared. As such, the environments where a lot of people would easily find a match that they've known for years even, has sort of disappeared in many places. And what's it been replaced with? Not a lot. Not a lot. So I understand from a social empowerment point of view, their, their MGTOW offers some things that are very relevant to men and women. Uh, this is why the last video was talking about traveling, because traveling gives confidence, um, abilities, self-awareness, and gives you some achievements to aspire to and places to visit and do things that you may not do else, elsewise, otherwise. Well, that's why I say that is more important than a relationship in the early years. That's why I stressed 17 to 30. Because once you hit your 30s, and if you've managed to avoid all the pitfalls that often revolve around early relationships you are in a better place for a relationship but also a lot of the problems that occur you've managed to avoid and that's why i think it's important to do things like traveling and it's not selfish it's about recognizing you're still young it's about recognizing that you have opportunities out there that you haven't even thought of it's also about recognizing that you can live a different way. It's a bit like when you first leave school, one of the first things you want is a new car. You want a car. A car is one of the biggest pitfalls financially that you can have and unless you're using it for work purposes uh, beyond your town. Because a lot of time the public transport is cheaper, but you may be better just getting a bike. Save yourself the money. Spend a couple of thousand pounds a year on something that is a cash drain when you're young. Instead, you could have spent that on traveling. Instead, you could have spent it on your education, doing stuff at home. A lot of the training courses out there now are at a better level than some of the university stuff because the university is creating courses for courses. It used to be horses for courses, but now it's courses for courses in the sense of courses sake. Um, so you end up with people going to university, study stuff that has no value. Even to the people doing it, there's a lot of courses out there. They're just doing so they've got something to do. It sounded okay. Didn't want to do maths. Maths too hard. Didn't want to do science. It's too hard. So what did you choose? Social media studies. So what are you going to do after that? I don't know. We'll just run up some debt on this. I'll sit away for three years and then we'll worry about that when we cross that bridge. My view on this is very simple. Um, you can learn it much, much faster on your own. Um, I've mentioned this before about when I did my carpentry and joinery, for example. I could do one lesson in four because I was four times faster than everybody else because I was doing it already, but ultimately one of the other people would sit and turn up on a Monday to read a book that they already own at home I'd read the book at work, in my lunch break. Because the whole point is, when I was going to 
there, there, the same with my electronics. When I was going to the college to do my electronics, I was going in for the exams. I wasn't going in there to study. You can study, you can read a book yourself. It's just a little bit of discipline to say, I'm going to read the first two chapters tonight. I'm going to cover this topic tonight. I'm going to make sure I know this because then I'll ask to do the exam. Because a lot of exams now are modular. So you can take the exams pretty much as and when you go into the classes. You don't have to cover the topics. You, you just have to read it. Carpentry is a little bit difficult in the sense that you have to be able to know how to play in a piece of wood, for example. That's part of it, being able to level a piece of wood and then flipping it over and making sure it's level all the way around. That is a little bit of an art form in the sense you've got to learn it. But it doesn't mean you need to learn it in the classroom. So spend £25 on a nice plane and take a piece of wood home from college and practice. Job done. You go in, you set the exam. You sit there on a Saturday afternoon out in the garden and nice and warm and learn how to do it. You, looking down it and making it seem that it's level. We're planing it flat. It's not difficult stuff. But the education system set up in a way is supposed to last years because they can charge a premium for it. You go online, there's courses on everything everything even if there's stuff that is not relevant to a specific course but you may be interested in it you can move veer on another tangent to something of interest and then come back and you know what you'll actually come out with more information and knowledge than you probably would if you went on one of these university courses because you're involved in something you have an interest in it's not steered in the way of what the lecturers want or the syllabus set by a national um, committee or something that steer things in the direction of ir irrelevance. The British citizen test is a prime example of that. There's lots of things in there the average British person couldn't even answer. Yet there is no connection to the fact that a lot of the questions are not even taught in school these days and may actually go against the grain of political correctness. How funny is that? Um, but yeah, my view, it's about empowerment. It's about recognizing you can do more. It's about recognizing that a lot of the pitfalls happen early on in life. Um, relationships, I believe you just need to take time on. That is it. Never rush into a relationship, never rush into kids. Wait until you're over 30. And I know people go, oh, the third's a long way away. And it's like, it's not. I'll tell you what, if you left kids till later and spent the money traveling, investing in yourself, investing in um, business or whatever you wanted to do, by the time you hit 30, you'll be able to make an informed decision whether kids are for you. And I know somebody's mentioned, well, if you do everything this way, you, you're going to end up alone. The answer to that is, I don't think so. I know a lot of women here in Spain. I don't need to have any sexual relationship with them. I'm happily married for a start. But the point is, there's a lot of people out there that are quite happy with being individuals. And it's a bit like where my, my father goes to camera camera club. There's a lot of people in there that are single, but they still function as a group, they still meet up, they still go on travels to Bavaria and different places. It doesn't mean they're sad and lonely. The only place I've seen that was probably, I could say was sad and lonely, was I was on a trip to Germany and the coach was full of what was a widow's club. Everyone in, on there, their partner had died in the last year. Now they were sad and lonely because everything reminded them of their partner. And the, the reason they were taking that trip was to try and break some of that bind because they felt guilty even on that trip um, because they feel like they're celebrating when they should be mourning. Yet they've already been mourning for nearly a year. Um, so I'd say that was sad. And I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with having a strong connection with something, someone or something. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But you've also got to recognize that you still need to be able to function as a human being, still be able to travel, experience things, get through the day without breaking down. And it all comes down to recognizing that things need to move on, even if you don't want it to. And I can understand that, you know, um, if you have a strong bond with somebody, the, their, your life stops, especially if you, it's like me and my wife, for example. My wife deals with all the cooking stuff and bits and, you know, there's lots of stuff my wife does that's, that's her, her space. Um, I could understand, you know, being in an empty house one day where your other partner's not there and you're thinking just now we'd be doing this or that. But I also recognize that companionship has had such a deeper, deeper meaning that those people belong together. But fundamentally, when they all got together, a lot of stuff people are facing now didn't exist because things have changed. A lot of the environment has changed. The social environment is not the same as when these people were together. Finding a partner that you could be with for life and have that sort of level of commitment to takes time. It takes a long time. You know, very rare is somebody bump into someone and say, yeah, that's it. We're together and it works. A lot of the time it's built on insecurities. Maybe this is the only girl that I can be with. Maybe, maybe, maybe she wants this and that's fine. I'll just go along with it as long as we're together. Da, da. And that's what's happening. Now, I don't know, I, sorry, I do know it happens on the women's side as well because um, somebody who worked for me a while back, she had the, a very controlling boyfriend to the point he would tell her what she had to wear and stuff like that. And it was only when she broke away from that relationship she recognized what he was doing to her, you know, even how much food she ate. And it was only once she had moved away and become more independent and started to see what had been done to her, that she could see that. And this is what I'm talking about, is the ability to make your own decisions. Because once you're sucked into some of these environments, you're locked in for a long period of time. Feeling that you're insecure and need to be with someone and then having a child to lock them into it as well as yourself, and it could be the other way around, is a prime example of where a lot of relationships have gone. This is where a lot of these kids have come from. It's from that insecurity. It's not from love. It's not from the we will be together forever in a uh, positive way anyway. Um, it's come from the need of being together and not from mature decision making and that's why i do think it's important things like travel etc etc as i've covered on the last video um but don't confuse that it's all me 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 what i'm explaining is what migtao is talking about and what i can I take from that um myself as you know, I'm very family orientated. I'm happily married. Um, but at the same time, I do understand a lot of stuff with Mita. I have experienced some of the problems they've had. I have experienced some of the issues they've had. Um, yeah, so I do get it. But at the same time, I'm not one of these guys that would go, oh, you know, if I was single, I'd be hitting a woman every day. I can't bother with that. I'd be more concerned about STDs than anything else. I'm more interested in learning something new or traveling or saving up for a yacht or something. That's more of an interest to me. You know, I think that's, that's where I do fit in with a lot of the MGTOW guys on that sense because a lot of people say, oh, you'd be lonely, you'd be this if you went that way. And I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think so because there is a belief that you would only, you'd be on your own and that nothing else would function. You, you, nobody, you, nobody would be your best friend or anything anymore. So uh, there's 11 friends of mine have a house um, somewhere in Eastern Europe. I can't remember where it is. It's a big house. 
and they brought it together. They're all single guys. They've all come out of bad relationships and they hide the fact that they own this house between them. But that's where they all disappear to. Because um, they go there for fishing and just it's just like a, a big lad place. Um, they've all got their own bedrooms in there. And no, they're not sad and lonely. They're not depressed. If anything, they're content. Because they have a way of life that A, doesn't have any stress with it. But B, it's much less complicated. You know, they're if they want a relationship and they find a girlfriend and stuff again, then they're, they're like, so be it. But ultimately, this house is their house. You know, it's the guy's place. It's not for guys and women. It's just where the guys go. They go, you know, because up on a big lake. Um, they go there for just chilling out. I'm not sure. I think it might be in Croatia. It might be Croatia, it is. Um, but the, the point being is, it doesn't mean the be all and end all. I remember, um, well, I don't know if he's still alive now. John, John um, was a surveyor at a housing association. John murdered his wife. Um, his wife, this is going back to the 70s. His wife um, and his brother and her best friends, they were all connected. He was married to the one girl, his brother was married to the other. These women used to go out and have sex with other men, then come back and taunt them. And John's brother hung himself. John had a similar thing where his wife was taunting him with the, I'm, I'm not gonna, it's, it's quite vulgar anyway, but, she was taunting him with certain things anyway. Um, he strangled her to death. Now, he got seven years in prison for that. And the joke being that even on that, although he lost seven years of his time, he come out with a, I think he got his, he studied law and he come out as a, that's where he become a qualified surveyor as well. While he, while he was away for seven years. Um, he'd also paid off his house and he'd bought the house next door to it as well. Sorry, no, he hadn't. He'd built a house next door to it um, while he was in prison. And financially, I mean, he said to me quite openly that, that it put him in a good stead. You know, I'm trying not to mince my words too much, but uh, yeah, he said the best thing that happened to him in some ways. But even then, I remember him saying things like, I could kill my girlfriend sometimes. And he would just look at me and go, you shouldn't think like that. And uh, yeah, because he had repented, but you could see um, an emptiness in him. You could see there was something deep, deep in him. He's a nice enough guy. But even he, he had a new girlfriend. She did not live in his house. Um, now, they were an odd couple because she seemed much older than him, but they were content. It didn't involve, I mean, I, I don't know what their sexual history is. I don't want to know. But they, they, the point being is they were content around each other. They did their own things together. They did um, that, like the boating and just partnering around doing their own thing. Not everything has to be based on sexual relations, and that's that's one of the important things I, I do want to stress out there. When you're younger, you're more interested into it. And I know a lot of guys go to the Philippines for the women. And like I said, I, I have no disagreement with that. Um, but ultimately, people need to make their own choices. But one of the important things I do recognize within MGTOW is although there is a lot of stuff that is seen as anti-women or is anti-women, at the same time, there's also a lot of information in there that is valid for both men and women. Um, and that's why I think you've got to take the broader picture. When I look at those guys that were with, with Reggie Yates, um, well, in that video, I thought a lot of those guys need direction, guidance, self-confidence, and pushing themselves forward. Um, I don't think the guy doing it was the right guy for them, well, in my personal opinion. But I do think I, that they just needed some direction. 
And that's why I say travel. Travel's the easiest one. Other stuff, you can spend years reading books that people sell to you and everything's a solution, et cetera, et cetera. But in all honesty, traveling is probably the easiest fix for all of it. Um, because you become more confident in yourself, independent, um, worldly. You know, you, you, you experience more things, you see more things. You understand how things function a lot more. Um, a self-help book, self-help book will only get you so far. And it, if you're getting preached to by the wrong type of people, then it will never get you to that way you should be anyway. Um, but I do recognize traveling allows you to make your own decisions. It allows you to develop your confidence. It allows you to develop your fitness, taste attributes, everything because it's an open book and it's written by you, you decide. And also because you're well-traveled, some companies even like that because it shows that you're an independent person. You're able to deal with things financially. You're able to look after yourself. You're able to speak more than one language. There's a lot of reasons that travel is fundamentally a cornerstone that people should be promoting when people are leaving school and they're going, what do you want to do? Don't know. Okay. Travel for a year. But it involves working as well. Because work involves getting some discipline, some direction, some confidence, some experience and stuff you haven't done before. And the ability to get out of bed in the morning. Because it all starts with actually putting some structure in there that allows you to form where you want to go. Um, because most people at that age have no idea. They're, you know, when they say, well, I have an idea, I'm gonna go and do this, I'm gonna do that. No, that's your parents. Your parents have told you what you're gonna do. And then you've been learning that since you were a child and you've been pre-programmed that that's gonna go on. Anyway, that's my thought. Thank you. <laughs>